Welcome to Rad Flicks. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am Joe Opinionated. Today on Rad Flicks, a deep dive into the year 1980. Back in 1980, they gave out Academy Awards. They did all that sort of stuff and uh, said a bunch of movies were the best. I'm here to call bullshit. These movies that we're going to honor today in their categories have stood the test of time. It's not just what was hot that December, what the studios paid the critics to say. These are reviews from normal people that watch at an average amount of movies. We wanna certify these movies as rad, they're rad flicks, nothing pretentious about this list. So there's six people, six certified normal people on our panel, and so we've all voted in different categories. Categories are best movie overall, most watched family movie night, best drama, best action adventure sci-fi, best horror or suspense, and best comedy. So in 1980, some things that went down, I guess, uh, Paul McCartney, that was the year that he got arrested in Japan with some weed and spent nine days in jail. Pink Floyd, The Wall started the year at number one. Who shot JR on Dallas? On May the 18th, uh, kind of close by to where I live, I'm in Canada, but in Washington State, Mount St. Helens blew its lid. Then uh, May of 1980, Pac-Man debuted in Japan in our country, Canada. That's when we officially made O Canada our national anthem. A few big losses in 1980 include Peter Sellers, Steve McQueen, another amazing actor, Alfred Hitchcock, one of the greatest directors of all time, John Bonham from Led Zeppelin, and John Lennon from The Beatles. 1980, the best picture went to a movie called Ordinary People, and the best director was Robert Redford. Best actor went to Robert De Niro for Raging Bull, and uh, Best Actress went to Sissy Spacek in Coal Miner's Daughter. Those are all great, and I'm not gonna argue with Robert De Niro being the best actor of that year. Probably would get my vote too. This isn't about putting people against people. This is about just honoring movies that we feel need to be honored. And where I got my start in watching movies uh, in my parents' living room, this is a photo of the, the old entertainment center there. On this side over here, I had all my taped movies. I taped a lot of movies off of Super Channel, of course, and uh, that's just how it rolled back then. This is my VHS collection up top here when I was in high school. You can spot a couple movies out there. That's The Deadpool, The Godfather Trilogy, Hook, Back to the Future, Star Wars, Dumb and Dumber. I'm sure you see quite a few in there. Thought we were really cool and ahead of our time by taping the entire Woodstock 99 start to finish, and now it's all on YouTube. That's where it all started. Okay, so the first category we're going to do is horror movie. For 1980, it really came down to two movies kind of led the way. Third place for 1980, Horror Suspense goes to Horror and Suspense legend master John Carpenter, and his movie is The Fog from 1980. That finished third place. Jamie Lee Curtis and Adrian Barbeau. Basically a movie about uh, some mysterious fog bringing trouble to a coastal town. Isolation in a lot of John Carpenter's movies, I mean, is the theme. The runner-up from 1980 for... Greatest horror movie, suspense movie, comes from director Sean Cunningham. It's a classic. It's Friday the 13th. There's not a whole lot of Jason, just a mysterious person going around and killing a bunch of people at Crystal Lake. It was a strong second place finish for this one. The first rad flick for 1980 for horror suspense. We're going with Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece, The Shining. Now, I've already featured The Shining in a couple other episodes. One was Jack Nicholson. That's where I famously took the bail in my chair. The first movie episode I ever did was on Stanley Kubrick because he's my absolute favorite director. This movie, if you have not seen it, is a psychological thriller. Not overly scary. It's creepy. It's creepy as, it, as they come. This is possibly the greatest suspense horror movie of all time. The raddest horror suspense movie is The Shining. The Shining was a clean sweep to amongst the normal people panel for rad flicks. Comedy is for 1980. Some that didn't quite make it were movies like The God's must be crazy. Gods Must Be Crazy is kind of a classic around my home as a child too and uh, it's about this bushman coming into civilization essentially. Pretty funny. Where the Buffalo Roam got a got a, fair, a second place pick. That's uh, Hunter S. Thompson with uh, Bill Murray. Nine to five with Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin and Dolly Parton was a runner up and it was also actually a top pick for one of our normal people on the on the board for the Radflix. 
my top pick for this year was directed by Sidney Poitier. It's the comedy Stir Crazy with Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. If you've ever watched Dumb and Dumber, they pull a lot from this movie Stir Crazy. And it's about these two guys that kind of get wrongfully accused and absolutely hilarious. One of the funniest movies ever. And in my opinion, the funniest movie that both Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor made. They made a series of comedies and this is my favorite by far. Also a runner up that did not make it to the final three is a uh, Cheech and Chong's next movie. Third place for the Rad Flicks, 1980, raddest comedy third place voted on by normal people not critics these have stood the test of time so forget all that crap in the old books directed by john landis we're going with blues brothers dan Aykroyd, john belushi a machine he's a maniac he's chris farley's idol 1980 third place we're going with for comedy we're going with blues brothers number two 1980 uh serious slapstick comedy canadian leslie nielsen the movie is airplane number one the f- Funniest movie, the raddest comedy of 1980 goes to Caddyshack. Director Harold Ramis, also uh, starring Chevy Chase, Roddy Dangerfield, Bill Murray. Hilarious. This is one of the funniest movies ever made. The people have spoken. The normal people. This is not the critics. Fuck the critics. You talk to different people and they're totally attracted to different parts of this movie. For me, it's all about Rodney. When he's on the screen, he is the funniest thing ever. And I love Chevy, and I love Bill Murray, and I love it. The whole cast is great. But for me, it's Rodney. Looks good on you, though. We're going to do the action, sci-fi, adventure movie. Okay, some movies that didn't make the cut for 1980 for action, sci-fi, adventure. Number one is Altered States. Uh, That's uh, with William Hurt, directed by Ken Russell. Another action adventure that uh, didn't quite make the final cut, got voted into this, was uh, The Blues Brothers again. The last one we're going with a ninja movie, uh, Return to the 36th Chamber. I think that's the one featured at the start of Jizza and Genius Liquid Swords. That one goes out to Joe. Third place for 1980 action adventure sci-fi goes to the action adventure that you've probably watched a hundred times on TV starring also starring Sally Field and Burt Reynolds. Smokey and the Bandit comes in number three for the raddest action adventure sci-fi for 1980. Number two for 1980 is Superman 2. This one, Lois Lane kind of figures out what's going on. Superman takes her back to his home planet. I just remember the the special effects in this seems so awesome when I was a kid. I have watched it recently, and yeah, this one does stand the test of time. It's a cool movie. It's Superman 2, Christopher Reeves, rest in peace. He's close with Robin Williams, so what does that tell you? He's awesome. This movie is definitely certified rad. Number two, greatest action sci-fi adventure movie of 1980. Number one for action sci-fi adventure for 1980. Yeah, it's uh, with a bullet. I think it was a straight across the board. Smokey and the Bandit did get one first place finish. The rest of it across the board goes to star wars episode five the empire strikes back grew up star wars nut loved star wars as a child and uh i still love the original trilogy a new hope through to return of the jedi this one's in the middle spoiler alert the bad guys win i was honestly a star wars nerd until the you know, the phantom menace and all that stuff came out easily the raddest sci-fi movie of 1980 this thing this movie kills it's great it's a rad flick and it didn't win best picture at the academy awards and it should have it's better than whatever the ordinary people i'll tell you that much right now drama 1980 rad raddest drama the top three was pretty solid across the board for drama with our normal people panel so the only one that finished outside of the tops was called it's called somewhere in time and that's all that stars christopher reeve somewhere in time starring christopher reeve and i don't even know that is so anyways good on uh, the panel for pointing that one out and i'm just a normal person i haven't claimed to have seen every movie now it's with netflix and hbo and all that stuff it's, it's, it's television shows are basically movies and are eating up all the good plots so now there's just really not as many great movies that come out because all the stories are being chewed up by excellent t- tv shows like ozarks or sopranos or breaking bad or fargo fargo the tv show is definitely you know, every episode is eating up a lot of great movie plots. Okay, so third place for uh, for best drama, 1980. Third place, 
third raddest movie of the year is Coal Miner's Daughter. I believe it's a biographical, autobiographical Loretta Lynn story. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe to shit. Sissy Spacek won the Academy Award for this movie, which is, you know, good on her. And it's a cool role. I've only watched a couple times, but I think of uh, Levon Helm from the band, the one of the greatest drummers of all time and singers, man, one of my favorite favorite artist and there's an episode on this channel for the band second raddest drama of 1980 goes to david lynch director david lynch starring john hurt and anthony hopkins it's a movie about a man with uh, elephant disease the movie is the elephant man and uh or he's he's got these deformities in victorian london is when the the story takes place it's a phenomenal movie i mean this one in a racer head is kind of hand in hand what made uh david lynch such a such a powerhouse in Hollywood. I'm not trying to get too artsy fartsy. These are meant to be normal picks and shit. This is a very good movie. Uh, second place. It's the Academy Awards are garbage. They're hot garbage. And uh, that's why, of course, this movie didn't come close to winning. But anyways, it's a great movie. Check it out. Anthony Hopkins is a killer in it. John Hurd is even better. The raddest drama of 1980 certified goes to Raging Bull. Director Martin Scorsese. Starring Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci. Maybe Joe Pesci's best role. I think that this is definitely one of Joe Pesci's highlights of his career. Maybe Robert De Niro's greatest role. I did a Martin Scorsese list. I've done a Robert De Niro list on this channel. Check it out. It's at my friend Joe. You can also check me out on uh, Patreon, Discord, and all that stuff. You can hook up with me and let me know what your picks are for 1980. Raging Bull is about Jake LaMotta. That's something that often gets lost in this, just how great Joe Pesci is in this movie. Robert De Niro's in on the camera 90% of the time, and he is phenomenal in this movie. Raddest drama of 1980. Family movie night. Voted on by a rad panel of six normal people. Not movie critics. We're just seeing a bunch of movies. A couple runner-ups. Uh, Herbie Goes Bananas. Got a few votes. Herbie Goes Bananas. I remember loving uh, watching the old Disney classic movies. I forget what day the magical world of Disney was. It was probably Sunday night. Is it a Sunday or Saturday night? But it was something we could pick up with the antenna on our TV. This is the one where Herbie the Love Bug goes to Mexico. Another one that finishes in the runner up pile for uh, 1980s family movie night is The Gods Must Be Crazy. This one's from Jess. Yeah, he's saying the Blues Brothers is a family movie. And uh, he's also got Caddyshack as family movie. So uh, definitely wouldn't have made it past my mom when I was a kid. But uh, Jesse's house, uh, he's, the kids are getting raised on Caddyshack and uh, Blues Brothers. Uh, another family movie night uh, from Caro went to uh, Stir Crazy. Let's go to the top two choices from the panel. From the panel of normal people for family movie night. The raddest family movies from 1980. Number two for raddest movie family movie night. Of 1980 goes to The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars. Home run if your kids have not seen Star Wars. It's family friendly. Also, uh, in the description, I always have the, all of these trailers, the movie trailers are from uh, YouTube links. It's a, in a playlist, so you can check them out. Make your tops list. Send it to us. Let us know what you think are rad flicks. Uh, anything we should add to the playlist. Please let me know in the comments below. Appreciate that. Or send me a direct message. I don't know how the hell you do that. Send me cash. I could use some cash. Let's go. Raddest family night movie, 1980, goes to Popeye the Sailor Man, starring Popeye, starring Robin Williams and Shelley Duvall. Olive oil and Popeye. Man, I love this uh, cartoon when I was a kid. Popeye the Sailor Man, best family movie night. Most watched by our panel for me was uh, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. Next on the panel, my man Ian. Third place was Superman 2. Second, Friday the 13th, and his most watched was Empire Strikes Back. Caro, the second, her second most watched movie of the year was The Shining. Her most watched movie of the year is 9 to 5. Bob's uh, second most watched movie of the year is Superman 2, and his most watched movie of the year is Caddyshack. Jess, uh, his uh, third place is Popeye, second place Raging Bull. His most watched movie of 1980 is The Shining, Joe 2. Third place Return to the 36 Chambers, second place Empire Strikes Back, and his most watched movie is Blues Brothers. That leaves us with a tie for second place. We have Superman 2. Superman 2 and 9 to 5 are tied for second, and uh, the winner for most watched of this year of 1980 goes to Star Wars Episode 5 Empire Strikes Back final category the final where we just say best movie overall for 1980 
So one of my suggestions didn't make it into the final. So one of my suggestions for greatest movie of 1980 is Stir Crazy. Um, another one that didn't make the final is uh, Raging Bull. Raging Bull did not make the final the final two most voted on. Nine to Five did not make the final two. Uh, Carol's obviously pretty obsessed with Nine to Five, but uh, hey, it's a great show. I'm glad that we have some diversity on the panel here. Blues Brothers uh, getting voted pretty high as the best movie of 1980. Didn't quite make it. It's not quite the raddest movie, according to the panel. And Return to the 36 Chambers, I get, you can guess who voted that. Runner up for raddest movie of 1980 goes to The Shining for the raddest movie of 1980, directed by Stanley Kubrick, starring Shelley Duvall. So she had a big year. She's in Popeye as well. Shelley Duvall, Jack Nicholson in uh, Stanley Kubrick's masterpiece uh loosely based on a uh, horror novel uh, written by stephen king i think something's wrong with you if you don't think that this is a rad movie once again i don't think it won much for oscars if it won anything of course not why would it that's why we need shows like this we got to recognize second raddest movie of 1980 is the shining raddest movie of 1980 it goes to star wars episode five the empire strikes back what can I say? It's just one of the coolest movies ever made. It's rad. It's certified rad. This movie definitely stands the test of time as being badass to this day. An excellent movie. An easy watch. Nothing too hoity-toity pretentious about this. This is just a great movie. It's a space western. It's The Empire Strikes Back. But that's 1980 Rad Flicks. Like and subscribe. Check out in the description. You can watch all the trailers. Let me know what ranks best for you in each category family movie night most watched best movie comedy science fiction action adventure horror all that i don't know what if i already said that one but i just want to give some respect to these movies and uh, we're going to be going all the way up to you know mid 2000s anyways check out my channel i've got lots of other episodes of desert island death matches music and movie rankings i'm sorry i'm a little low on facts and high, and high on, opinions. on opinions. Respect to the raddest movie of 1980, The Empire Strikes Back.